Hello and welcome to another video. Today, as you would have seen from the title and the thumbnail, I'm bringing you my August reading wrap up and it was a good month for me. I feel like I have bounced back from August, not only with the amount of books I've read, but the quality. Three of my most anticipated books of the year are in this and they were all five stars. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so in the month of August, I read 18 books with a total of 7,444 pages, which is such... Ugh, I'm so happy with that number. But without further ado, let's get stuck in. So the first book I read was the Loki Agent of Asgard Complete Collection. This is just a, the collection of comics, but it is the complete collection. I've been wanting to get this for ages and it did not disappoint. This was a four star. I absolutely loved this. I loved Loki in this. I thought he was amazing and I loved the art style. Like, look at that art. It's absolutely stunning and i just really loved everything about this and i loved the story and especially after watching the tv show loki it's just it was just what i needed i needed more loki in my life and this delivered and i'm so happy i managed to get this next was my buddy read of last breath by rachel kane which is the 11th book in the morganville series this got a three star <laughs> it happened we got to the ones that I don't like as much. Is there seriously another helicopter? I had this in my vlog as well last week. Come on, go away. I'm gonna talk over it. Um, so there's this whole like storyline that lasts for two books in the series. And I really don't like it. <laughs> it involves a character called Magnus. Um, I can't say anything other than that without spoiling it. Um, because I don't think it even says it in the blurb. Oh no, it does. Um, it's to do with water. And I wasn't a fan of this storyline. Unfortunately, we do have another book for this storyline and that's book 12 which will be written in September so I do anticipate that being a three star as well because it just I was not a fan and it takes the enjoyment out of it for me um because there is a scene in this that if it would been in any of the other books this scene would have literally had me sobbing I didn't even well up at all that's how little I cared about this book um the only reason it got as high a rating as it did was because it's part of a series that I have been loving and the characters bring it up and Rachel Kane's writing is just so addictive that it makes me want to still read on even though I'm not enjoying the plot um and I think it helps for me as well that because it is a reread I know that books 13 14 and 15 are incredible I just have to get past 11 and 12 so yeah next up we have Love on the Main Stage by S.A. Domingo and this got a four star this is a YA contemporary romance and this had me so nostalgic for concerts and festivals I am a massive fan of music festivals and concerts and obviously I haven't been able to do any the last music festival I went to was actually May 27 to 18, I think. And the last concert I went to was the 21st of December 2018. That's not acceptable. <laughs> I love concerts. Why have I not been to one for so long? I mean, I can understand 2020 and 2021. Um, however, I am supposed to be... Fingers crossed it goes ahead, going to a concert in a couple of weeks. So I'm literally just keeping everything crossed that that goes to plan because I have missed concerts. But anyway, back to the book. Um, I really enjoyed the characters in this. I really enjoyed 
the setting of music festivals. Uh, the female main character, her family runs a restaurant, like, like they own a restaurant in Brixton. And again, she walks past Brix Brixton Academy and it just brought back all my memories of different gigs I've been to at Brixton Academy. It was just, oh, so nostalgic. Um, and her family basically take a food truck to music festivals and she goes with them because she helps out and she meets someone and it's a wire contemporary romance so it's very predictable but I just I loved it and it was just so wholesome. Next up I finished a series I read Monsters of Men by Patrick Ness which is the third book in the Chaos Walking trilogy. This book broke me. I was reading the ending of this on my sprints and I had to turn my camera off because I was crying at part of the ending. <laughs> this was such a good ending to a series like I can't I don't even know how I can talk about this without spoilers but certain characters got their comeuppance other characters I I had a few shocks there was quite a few things I did not see come in and I was like I was shook um but overall this chunky beast of a book made me so happy even when it was making me sad because it just I'm so glad I read this series it's a part of me now Next up, I buddy read The Great Brain Robbery by P.G. Bell with Helen over at Helen's Bookhaven. We had such a fun time reading this. This was a four star um, and I just, one, one thing I love about this is the illustrations. They're just incredible, but I loved the adventure side of this and the reason behind the name the great brain robbery was i loved how that was revealed and just overall it was just such a fun read i love the characters this this book we actually had two povs because the team is sort of like split up because they have to do they have different tasks to do and we had both susie and wilmot's point of views because they had gone off separately and it was just it was a fun time and I'm looking forward to reading the third book I believe this is only a trilogy um, but I'm looking forward to reading the third book next up we have Lyriel by Garth Nix which is the second book in the Old Kingdom series I buddy read this with my friend Fran um, it actually took us quite a while to buddy read it because things just kept coming up in our in our lives and we weren't able to read it any quicker but we both really enjoyed this and this was also a four star which Sabriel the first book in the series was as well but the way this ended I spent most of the book thinking this it's getting too close to the end of the book and things aren't being resolved and the ending happened and you have enough resolved that it gives you some answers like some of the answers we got as well, I did not see coming whatsoever. I was really happy for one character in particular. I can't say the name and I can't say why because I don't want to spoil anything. But there was one character in particular I was really happy with what they found out because it's going to make them happy. <laughs> um, and then there was like mysteries solved and this is really hard to talk about without spoiling because I can't say anything because it's the second book. Um, but I'm really looking forward to reading the third book and seeing how they actually find a solution to the actual issue at hand in this series. But yeah, really enjoyed this and four star. The next book, I buddy read Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb with Kelly and... You remember a few months back when I read Assassin's Apprentice and I gave it two stars and I just did not like it whatsoever? Well, I gave Hob another go because this one, this one has pirates, magic ships, sea settings, and I thought I'm more likely to enjoy it. And guess what? I did. This got a four star. I felt so strongly towards the characters. It, this gave me feelings within the first 50 pages, which is something that Assassin's Apprentice didn't do in the entire 
however many pages that book was I am so happy because I wanted to like Robin Hobb because the books sound right up my street and I just think Assassin's Apprentice wasn't for me um this one was um, I'm really excited to continue the trilogy and I have actually reserved the second book at the library but the characters were like one of the main things for me because not only did I love certain characters I hated others like I'm just gonna say them Kyle and Malta I hate Kyle and Malta I have no feelings really towards Kenneth but I have heard that by the third book in this trilogy I'm gonna hate him so I'm prepared for that but it's fine because I don't like him I have no feelings towards him at the moment but then there's characters that I love like I love Wintro I love Vivacia as well and yeah there's just so many characters and no matter what my feelings towards the characters were I had those feelings and I felt them which is something that Assassin's Apprentice didn't do for me and I'm just I'm so happy that I enjoyed this especially with the size of it as well I felt like it would have been a waste if I didn't enjoy it but I did enjoy it so there we go next up we have Sirens of Los Angeles by Cadis Knight this is the novella in the Bloodweb Chronicles series and I read the first book last year and loved it and this is so in the first book the main character works for this this company place and we know that her sister went missing but we don't know the circumstances behind her sister going missing we find that out in this novella we find out the circumstances around it and also how she ends up working where she's working so it was a very short book it was like less than 150 pages and it was only on kindle but this was just such a nice addition and i'm even more ready to dive into the second full length book in the series now and this got a four star the next book i read <laughs> was If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich. And this is my favourite book of the year. This was obviously a five star, but not only was it a five star, but on Core Pile, if you know the Core Pile system that was created by G over at Book Roast, you'll know you have seven different categories that you rate each category out of 10, and then it calculates that into a five star rating every single category got 10 for this book this book i cannot find any fault with whatsoever this book as well as being absolutely incredible and heartwarming and heartbreaking at the, all at the same time gave me the nostalgia i needed as someone who has been part of many boy band fandoms but one in particular which is you know the biggest boy band fandom in the world until bts came along anyway um you know i it gave me feels it hit me right in the feels and it just oh, it was just perfect like I, I genuinely can't find any fault with this book everything was tense this is a perfect book and nothing can now beat this as my favorite book of the year because yes it's like there's a possibility something else will get all tens but then it will just tie with this one <laughs> like nothing's gonna actually beat it this is my favorite book you're looking at my favorite book of the year in august this is one of those books i was talking about at the beginning that i said did not disappoint and it was like one of my most anticipated books of the year even though it now comes out in january we're just gonna pretend it still comes out this year but yeah this book blew my mind and I loved it I loved everything about it the characters the plot the intrigue the logic the enjoyment was like I would have given it 500 if I could have but <sighs> I need everyone to read this book so I can shout about it please the next book I read was The Battle for Raw by Jenna McLachlan and this book was amazing this is the third book in the Raw series and once again you know Arthur and Rose go to their granddad's for the school holidays and off they pop into their imaginary world that isn't so imaginary and from the ending of the second book 
we know stuff that they're worried about in Raw. And the way this was written, like the plot of this and the plot twist was just amazing and the ending was so wholesome there's one scene in particular and it literally just made my heart burst with happiness it was so cute why is there another helicopter again but i loosely buddy read this with my mum we sort of we started on the same day like we did with the second book but we didn't actually set out pages we just read at our own pace but we both really enjoyed it it was a four star for me and i just the ending was just perfect and as sad as I am that the series is now finished, I think it was it was wrapped up so perfectly. Next up we have Take Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This got a four star. Now if you watch my vlogs, you'll know the ending sort of made me feel a bit weird and it's been a week since I read it and I'm still feeling that way about it. I do genuinely think that if it wasn't for the ending making me feel the way it did, this could have been a five star. But because of the way it ended, it made me feel really weird and it's definitely a me thing. So I don't want this to deter anyone from reading it because it's definitely a me thing. I don't think I was in the right place to read this sort of book, which is a shame. And it's the reason I'm not going to pick up the third book yet because I don't want that to happen with the third book as well, because I'm really enjoying this series. But I did really enjoy the characters. Danny's bluntness is just brilliant. And Zaf is just adorable. I love him. Um, but yeah, I don't really want to talk about this one too much because I'm still feeling really weird about it. But it did get a four star still, even with those feelings. So yeah, next up. I reread one of my favourite books of 2020, which is The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This, of course, once again got five stars. The first time I read this, it got five stars, and that was before I started using Core Pile. And then I got it got five stars with Core Pile. So, you know, I actually ended up listening to the mostly listening to the audiobook. I started out doing both, but then I just devoured the rest of the book on audiobook um this book broke me all over again and I can't really say anything else that I haven't already said in the past about this book but it's just so beautiful so heartbreaking some parts are so adorable but then if you've read it they those adorable parts hurt because you know you know what happens Henry will continue to be the love of my life i love him so much and i just i love this book so much and i got to read one of my physical editions because the first time i read it i had an eoc so i did kind of get to read one of my physical editions <laughs> next up we have fire with fire by destiny soraya this was the fairy loop edition but this was one of my most anticipated books of the year and it's got a five star. I really enjoyed this. I haven't read many YA fantasy standalones or just fantasy standalones in general because fantasy does tend to be a series thing and if you're gonna do fantasy in a standalone like with Prairie the Orange Tree you have to do it right and Destiny Soraya did it right. Like oh. I was so angry at some of the characters at some point because they were making stupid decisions and I just wanted to scream like no don't do that that's a bad thing to do you're making a mistake don't do it and then other characters I was like yes you do that you do that and it just made me like I had emotions but I loved one of the sisters. I loved Nox. Nox is the dragon in this. Oh, Nox was amazing. And there was another character, which I'm not going to say the character's name or what they did. They, I was very unsure about them. 
and I had good reason to be unsure about them. But then I still don't know how I feel about the character by the end of it. I feel like I do, but I don't. Um, but that's that's a me thing. I feel like I, I know how I should feel about the character, but I'm still unsure. But um, I just, I loved this. There's dragons, there's dragon slayers, there's sorcerers. There's best friends and the main character, well, one of the main characters, one of the sisters, is bisexual, which by rep, yes. Um, but yeah, this was amazing. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year and it did not disappoint. Thank you, August, for bringing me this book and me loving it. <laughs> Next up, I read Melts by Ellie Fountain. This was a four star for me, which I was actually quite shocked about. I did actually think this might be more of a three star and I've seen quite a few other people say that it was a three star for them. But for me, this was a four star. I really liked how we had the two perspectives. We had B and we had U2 and B lives a pretty generic life in the sense that you know she lives in a house she goes to a school like yeah she lives in a colder place because her and her family move around quite a lot for her dad's work so she doesn't really have friends because she's constantly moving schools but she has a pretty what we see as normal life because you know she lives in a town you two lives in the arctic in a little village where there's not really much electricity and they have to like hunt for food sometimes and make their own clothes and everything deliveries aren't very regular so they sort of like live off the land and it was just so interesting seeing from two different points of view and then the two characters are brought together by certain circumstances which the circumstances they were brought together by I did not actually know that was gonna be like the plot and I was so intrigued by it and I loved the resolution of that as well but I loved how you know the two characters taught each other things the ending was a little bit bittersweet because although it was happy it was also sad because of like there's a lot of mention of like climate change and global warming and obviously with you two living in the arctic that's a big problem for his village and yeah there was some moments where i was a bit like sad but overall really enjoyed this book and i'm really glad i read it Next up we have Rainbow Grey by Laura Ellen Anderson. This again was a four star. I really enjoyed this. I love Ray Grey. She is awesome. I mostly, my favourite character is Nim the Cloud Cat because he's a cloud cat that explodes. <laughs> he's awesome. Um, I loved Ray Grey's parents. They were awesome too, even though her dad wasn't in it much because he was off being a weatherling. Um, but I just, I loved the story. I loved the characters. I loved the setting and I went straight to the page. Um, How to Train Your Gavin is actually a character in this. That's Gusty Gav. And when I was reading the, see the scene where he was talking, I could just hear Gavin talking, like saying the lines. But the... The illustrations are absolutely stunning in this and I'm going to find you a one of Nim the cloud cat. So this is Nim the cloud cat but his eyes are on his bum. That's after he's exploded. That says all you need to know about this book and how whimsical and fun it is and I just I loved it it was brilliant. Next up we had Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon which is the second book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of people DNF or give this two stars, but this got a four star from me. I actually really enjoyed this. I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the first book. I think because I really liked Georgie and this one follows Liz, but Liz as a character did grow on me a lot through this book. And I just, I loved how she dealt with stuff. <laughs> like she just has this way and I liked how she dealt with stuff and although you know we don't read these this series and books like this for the plot the plot was actually okay <laughs> shock horror I know 
Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this and I don't really know what else to say without spoiling, which people probably don't care about spoilers for this series, but I'm not going to say them just in case. But yeah, I actually really enjoyed this book and I'm definitely continuing this series because it is a wild ride. So after that, that book was the last book on my official TBR, which meant for the last few days, and I'm actually filming this on the 30th of August, because I've decided I'm not reading anything else this month. I'm giving myself a break for the last couple of days. Well, I have been reading today, but I'm giving myself a break for tomorrow. Have a day off before the chaos of September happens. But that meant I could free read. <laughs> And yesterday I decided to start Defy the Night by Bridget Kemra. And this was one of my most anticipated books of the year. And this was the third one I read this month of that anticipated books of the year that did not disappoint. I'm honestly so happy. This was a five star. It was absolutely incredible. And I love the characters. And I'm really intrigued about some of the characters that although we did get some background on, we could definitely do with some more background on. I'm just going to say it. Harriston and Quint are two characters I'm intrigued by. I need more background on them. Like, and Harriston's my favourite character. I love Harriston. I, I love Harriston. It was Wes. Like, we, we got more of Harriston and I was like, no, Harriston's my favourite character. Um, but... I really liked Tessa's character. I thought she was a really amazing female lead. And oh, just love everything about this. And I'm so looking forward to seeing where this series goes. Especially with, I mean, a lot of people have been like asking like how this fares against the Curse Breaker series. And obviously, and I said this in my vlog and Liv was saying this on our sprints that we can't really judge it as a series against the series yet, but if you take this, which is the first book in a series, and you take A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which is the first book in a series, I think this is better, and you can see the improvement in her writing. I mean, Curse So Dark and Lonely was absolutely incredible, and it was a five star for me, but this, you can see the improvement since her writing that series. And it just makes me even more excited to see what the rest of this series is going to bring us. And uh, hopefully it's going to bring us more Harriston. Please. I don't know what I'm saying, please. Bridget is never going to watch this, but please. <laughs> and then today, because I was, you know, I had time, I thought, why not? Let's read the complete collection of The Eternals by Jack Kirby. This is, like with the Loki, this is a collection of comics. These are very old comics. I say very old. I'm sorry to anyone that was born in these years. <laughs> um, these comics range, the first one was released in July 1976 and the last one was released in January 1978. So this was two years worth of a comic release, like series release. And this was just, it was a fun read. This did get a three star. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as Loki. I think it's because I have no previous knowledge of the Eternals and obviously with the movie coming out in November I've seen the trailer for that and it looks absolutely incredible however I don't know how accurate to this this collection it's gonna be but I did just want to read something to do with the Eternals beforehand and I saw so many people um in the comic book community saying this is where to start with the Eternals if you're going to read the comics. So when I managed to get this collection, I was really happy and I'm really glad I've read it. And even though it did only get a three star, I still really enjoyed it. The art style is brilliant. I love the art style. It's really old school comic books, which I know sounds silly because it was literally originally printed in the 70s. So it is old school, but... I just it was just brilliant and I really enjoyed it and it's made me even more excited to watch the movie when it comes out in November. So that was my August wrap up. I'm really happy. I know I keep saying it but I'm really happy with my reading this month. I did take part in technically two readathons so obviously I co-hosted the Royal Readathon Sidekicks 
which had 10 prompts and from what I've told you 10 of the books that I have talked about today were for Royal Readathon and then the entirety of the 28th and the first 12 hours of the 29th was Polathon which was hosted by J.D. Ray Reads and I did read both of these plus Barbarian Alien for that readathon which was a success. I managed to read them all within 23 hours actually no less than that because I finished Barbarian Alien a lot earlier than that and then read something else that wasn't for that TBR and then I got to free read two books so it was a very successful month and now I get tonight to just chill and do whatever and tomorrow because I think I'm going to need that break in advance for the chaos of September because if you've seen my September TBR there's a lot of books on it and there's actually a few books I missed off of that video which weren't for any readathons or anything they were just buddy reads so I'm gonna need the cleanse before I begin that <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoy the chaos of my September readathons and tbrs and everything because it is going to be chaos obviously i will be weekly vlogging as i always do but i hope you enjoy the chaos because that's what it's gonna be obviously i don't really need to tell you what my favorite book is it's definitely if this gets out but let me know in the comic comics let me down in the comments i've got comics on my brain because i've read two this month let me know in the comments down below what your favourite book that you read in August was and if you took part in the Royal Readathon let me know how you did. I have seen so many people on our Twitter and on our sprints taking part and honestly it means the world to me and Liv. We've had such a fun time especially this time around because a lot more people have been taking part and it just makes my heart burst because we put a lot of work into them and we have so much fun doing them and it's nice to see other people having fun with it too and I'm getting sappy so I'm gonna stop talking about it <laughs> but um I hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time bye